Hello friends, very good morning to everyone present here. So very warm welcome to my business law channel. So this is the last video. This will be the last unit. This uh, second last unit under this uh, business law syllabus, which is a uh, limited liability partnership act 2008. So under this winding up of LLP friends, I'll be covering three, uh, I will be creating three videos. In the first video, uh, you know, I will cover all these headings which I have given here under the heading points of discussion. First of all, meaning, then winding up versus resolution, modes of winding up of LLP, full entry winding up or liquidation, and then prerequisites. Prerequisites for voluntary liquidation. And the last will be voluntary liquidation process. So let us start now, friends. You all know the meaning of LLP. You all know, friends, that LLP is a body corporate and is an artificial person which is created by legal process, which is known as incorporation. And this LLP comes to an end through another legal process, which is known as dissolution. And on the dissolution of LLP, its name is struck off from the records of ROC and the fact is published in the official gazette. Now let us know friends, what is the meaning of winding up? Now winding up is a process where all the assets of the business are disposed of by the LLP liquidator and liabilities of the LLP are met. And if there is any surplus after that, that is distributed among the partners of LLP. What is the difference between winding up and dissolution? These two terms, friends, cannot be used interchangeably. Winding up is different from dissolution. There are two bases of distinction between the two terms. One is the meaning. Winding up is the process which brings an end to the life of LLP. There's a process through which the life of the LLP comes to an end. Creditors are paid off out of the proceeds which are realized from the sale of assets. And when we talk about dissolution, dissolution is the last stage of liquidation. After many legal compliances are fulfilled, then the liquidator applies to the court for the dissolution order of the LLP. And then the LLP is dissolved. Second point of distinction is friends, legal entity. Winding up is a long process. After winding up and prior to dissolution, the legal existence of the LLP continues. LLP is still a legal entity, separate legal entity. And it can be sued by others and it can also sue others in the court of law. But on dissolution, LLP ceases to exist. It loses its separate legal entity. And since its name is struck off from the records of ROC, Registrar of Companies, and the fact is notified in the official gazette. And now, friends, I would like to talk about the next heading, which is modes of winding up of LLP. Broadly speaking, friends, there are three modes of winding up of LLP. The very first one is voluntary winding up. Second is insolvency and bankruptcy court 2016. Through this court provides steps for restructuring and revival of corporate data. Yet under, circum uh, under certain circumstances, NCLT, National Company Law Tribunal can pass order for the liquidation of LLP. Therefore, you know, we include under the modes of winding up. Third one is compulsory winding up by the tribunal. So friends, I would like to talk about the voluntary winding up first. So chapter 5 of the part 2 of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, IBC, 2016 provides for various provisions for the liquidation of corporate persons. According to section 59.1 of the court, 
a corporate person who intends to liquidate itself on voluntary basis and meets the conditions and procedural requirements as prescribed by IBBI may initiate voluntary liquidation procedure under the provisions of chapter 5 of part 2 of the IBC 2016 now the question arises what is the meaning of the term corporate person because i have used the term corporate person here let us know now what is the meaning of corporate persons section 3 subsection 7 of the ibc code 2016 defines and includes corporate persons as a company registered under the companies act 2013 includes companies incorporated under the previous company law which was 2000 which was 1956 and a uh, llp registered under the llp act 2008 however it ex- excludes the entities who are financial service provider friends note it may be noted that the corporate person has been used for llp in this video and in my subsequent videos also relating to this uh, winding up of llp I hope everything is clear to you. Whatever headings I have covered till now. Now the term corporate person, I have already told you, it has been used for LLP in the two three videos relating to the winding up of LLP. Now I'll take a voluntary liquidation regulations 2017, which have been issued by IBBI with effect from 1st April 2017. and ibbi stands for insolvency and bankruptcy board of india and now friends the question arises what is this ibbi it is the most important institutional arrangement for the new insolvency and bankruptcy design it was established on 1st october 2016 in accordance with the provisions of ibc 2016 it was constituted as a technical committee under the ibbi regulations 2017 but friends there are certain prerequisites for voluntary liquidation as stipulated by ibc 2016 so which are these conditions there are certain conditions which should be satisfied by the corporate person who wishes to opt for voluntary liquidation now i'll take up all these three conditions the first one is friends the corporate person must be solvent so we are talking about llp it means llp must be solvent must be able to pay its debts out of the assets and second one is a declaration by majority of the dp designated partners affirming that the corporate person is in a position to pay all the debts in full form in full from the proceeds of the assets to be sold in liquidation so declaration has to be given by the dp designated partners that you know whenever the assets are sold in liquidation out of the proceeds of the assets all the debts will be paid in totality and the third one is the voluntary liquidation is not undertaken to defraud any person so partners have to declare their main motive of voluntary liquidation is not to defraud any person moving ahead friends and now i'll take up the heading steps involved in the process of voluntary liquidation friends there are 10 steps i'll take up this procedure or steps involved in the voluntary liquidation the 10 steps first one is commencement of liquidation now here friends under this first step there are number of sub points which i would like to discuss the very first point is regarding obtaining declaration of solvency which is dos section 59 subsection 3 of the code this provides a declaration of solvency duly verified by an affidavit debit so designated partners have to submit the affidavit they have to declare that the corporate person is solvent enough and this declaration must be accompanied with certain documents 
and these documents are audited financial statements and record of business operations of the corporate person is llp for the previous two years for the or for the period since its incorporation whichever is later and next is next document is a report of the valuation of assets of the corporate person or the llp if any which is to be prepared by the registered valuer so note friends you know this report has to be prepared by the registered valuer passing of resolution a resolution shall be passed by majority of the partners of llp for voluntary liquidation and uh, they have to appoint insolvency professional who will be acting as liquidator and this has to be done within 4 weeks of obtaining the declaration coming to the next point which is approval of voluntary winding up by the creditors now even you know the uh, creditors have to approve in case the llp owes debts to any person the creditors representing two third in value of the debt of the llp shall approve the resolution passed and they have to approve uh, uh, the resolution passed within a period of 7 days of such resolution moving ahead friends notification to the registrar and ibbi the corporate person shall notify the registrar and the ibbi about the resolution to liquidate itself within a period of 7 days of such resolution or the subsequent approval by the creditors as the case may be commencement of liquidation proceedings the liquidation proceedings of the corporate person shall be deemed to have commenced from the date of passing of the resolution subject to the creditors approval so friends when the resolution is passed uh, and the uh, creditors have uh, given their approval and then you know the liquidation proceedings of the llp shall commence now the question arises what is the effect of liquidation i would like to discuss the effect of liquidation now the very first point is carrying on of business the corporate person or the llp shall cease to carry its business from the com- liquidation commencement date except if required for the beneficial winding up of its business whatever is required for the benefit uh, beneficial winding up of its business that only the llp will carry on others activities you know will not be allowed to the corporate person second is continuous of its existence the corporate person or the llp shall continue to exist unless un, until it is dissolved because dissolution is the last step in the winding up of llp now coming to the second step which is appointment and the remuneration of liquidator an insolvency professional which i have already mentioned is to be appointed as liquidator and should satisfy the eligibility conditions which have been laid down under regulation 6 the resolution passed under regulation 3 subsection 2c or under section 59 3c as the case may be shall contain the terms and conditions of the appointment of the liquidator including the remuneration payable to him so in the resolution all these terms and conditions of the appointment of the liquidator and uh, uh, in a remuneration also will have to be specified the remuneration payable to the liquidator shall form part of the liquidation cost so whenever liquidation expenses are to be uh, taken care of then first of all this uh, remuneration should be deducted from the uh, you know from the liquidation amount now i'll talk about the reporting what is to be reported by the liquidator the liquidator shall prepare and submit which all reports four reports are here friends first is the preliminary report second is annual status report third is minutes of consultation with the stakeholders you know a liquidator is required to convene meetings with the stakeholders with the partners designated partners with the creditors okay and then you know the minutes are of the meetings are to be recorded 
and they are to be presented wherever it is required then then last of all the final report has to be prepared by the liquidator now moving ahead the next step is step number 3 is public announcement by the liquidator now you know the question arises what will be the form and time of announcement what will be the content and the mode of announcement form and time of announcement the liquidator shall make a public announcement in form a of the schedule one and this is to be made within a period of 5 days of his appointment content of a point announcement the announcement shall invite the stakeholders to submit their claims due to the corporate person within a period of 30 days from the liquidation commencement date mode of publishing of announcement and the mode of publishing of announcement shall be uh, the announcement shall be published in one english and one regional language newspaper with wide circulation at the location of the registered office and also the principal office if any of the corporate person if there is any principal office also then at that place also it should be uh, the announcement has to be published so it has to be published on the website of the corporate person means i like it is also to be published on the website if any website has been designated by the ibbi for this purpose the next one is verification of claims so after all these steps you know the next uh, step is verification of claims now the uh, creditor by this time the creditors have submitted their claims and now you know the claims are to be verified by the liquidator liquidator has to verify their claims the liquidator shall verify the claims submitted within 30 days from the last date for the receipt of claims and may either admit either you know if the e finds that uh, he has verified and all the claims are correct genuine claims then he has to admit if he finds that some of the admit uh, claims are not genuine then he has to reject those claims he may reject wholly or partially depending upon the case There is the next step is realization of assets. Now, what should be the manner of sale? How the assets are to be disposed of, and you know how the money are monies are to be recovered, and where the money has to be kept. So, all these points I would like to discuss now. First is the manner of sale. It may be noted that BL regulations allow for the liquidator to value and sell the assets of corporate person. in the manner and mode approved by the corporate person whatever manner or mode the corporate person the partners of the uh, you know partners and creditors uh, they have approved you know strictly the asset should be sold in that manner and mode recovery of money is due the liquidator shall make an effort to recover and realize all assets and dues to the corporate person in a time bound manner keeping in mind the interest of the stakeholder so the time will be fixed and within that time all monies are to be recovered through the sale of assets now realization of unpaid capital contribution you all know friends in case of llp a liability of the partners is limited up to the amount of contribution and if the our partners contribution is unpaid then the liquidator shall realize the unpaid capital contribution from the partners who have not yet paid so the next step is deposit and distribution of proceeds of liquidation now liquidator has to open an account in the name of the llp followed by the words in voluntary liquidation because you know it is a case of voluntary liquidation you know the, uh, we are presuming that all conditions have been satisfied and then he has to deposit all this money received on behalf of the corporate person in that bank account the liquidator shall distribute the proceeds from the realization within 6 months from the receipt of the amount to the shareholders whatever amount he has received now proceeds are to be distributed then period of 6 months first of all as i have told you earlier friends first of all 
From this proceed, the liquidation cost has to be deducted, and whatever amount is left out, that will be distributed, you know, uh, uh, by the way of discharging liabilities. Seventh point is completion of liquidation and preparation of final report. And now, uh, having fulfilled, uh, you know, all the formalities uh, discussed uh, till now. Uh, the the liquidator has to prepare the final report now. The liquidator shall uh, make the effort to wind up the affairs of the corporate person within 12 months from the voluntary liquidation commencement date. Let us presume, friends, this voluntary liquidation uh, commenced from 1st of January 2022. Then the liquidator has to complete this liquidation by the end of 31st December 2022. In case the voluntary liquidation process continues for more than 12 months, then the liquidator is required to present a status report indicating that what is the process of the liquidation, to what extent the uh, formalities have been fulfilled and how much time it will extra take now. On completion of the liquidation process, the liquidator shall prepare the final report which will consist of audited accounts of liquidation, receipts and payments. So friends, it means the accounts of liquidation, receipts and payments are to be audited. And then only the final report has to be prepared on the basis of that. Coming to the next step, which is submission of final report. The liquidator shall submit the final report to the registrar and IBBI where the affairs of the corporate person, that is LLP, have been completely wound up and its assets completely liquidated. The liquidator shall make an application to the NCLT, National Company Law Tribunal, for the dissolution of the corporate person. If the NCLT is satisfied with the application, it shall pass an order for the corporate person and corporate person shall be dissolved from the date of order. So let us presume all the formalities have been fulfilled and final report has been prepared by the liquidator. It has been submitted to the NCLT as well as uh, 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 it has been prepared to the NCLT. Uh, and then, you know, uh, the NCLT uh, is, uh, we are also presuming that uh, NCLT is also satisfied with the all formalities. NCLT has come to know that all the formalities have been fulfilled. Then the order has to be passed for the dissolution of the LLP. And the LLP shall be dissolved from the date of the order and the corporate person shall be dissolved accordingly. So as per the date which has been mentioned in the order, the corporate person or the LLP shall be dissolved in the same manner. The last step is, friends, filing of order with the ROC. ROC, you all know, stands for Registrar of Companies. The order of the NCLT shall be filed with the registrar by the corporate person within a period of 14 days from the receipt of the order or copy of the order. So whenever liquidator has received this order from that within a period of 14 days, you know, the liquidator is required to submit this copy of the order with the registrar. This is all about all the 10 steps which are required in the liquidation, voluntary liquidation of LLP. Friends, it is all from my side and I hope you will like the content. Do subscribe to my channel. If you have not subscribed yet, I'm very thankful to you uh, all for viewing my various videos. Friends, I'll keep creating videos for all of you. You keep watching all the videos and uh, have a great learning. Keep smiling always. We'll meet soon. Stay blessed always. Okay, friends. Goodbye.